doctrine of discovery that the, um, <clears throat> the discovery of the so-called new world meant that when well, the question came up, who owns it and what are we going to do? And, and, and immediately, uh, the, uh, Pope Alexander VI, and we'll meet in a moment, uh, issued this bull declaring that, and I won't, can't get into the <coughs> technical aspects of where the line was drawn, but it, and most of Latin America uh, or South America was uh, granted to the king and queen of Spain by fiat. In other words, the doc we discovered it, so therefore uh, it's ours. Uh, and this uh, obviously ignored the, any claim by the local people <coughs> and so forth. And actually, I want to mention that this was cited in uh, uh, McIntosh case uh, by uh, Chief Justice Marshall of the United States Supreme Court. He said, well, this goes back a long ways. We have claim to all these unsettled lands in the West and the Louisiana Purchase and so forth. And he really traced it all the way back. And, and uh, present day Native American scholars have kept emphasizing the importance of this doctrine of discovery for everything else that followed. Okay, here's Alexander VI, uh, probably one of the most decadent popes, and that's saying something. Uh, and I won't get into his, uh, you know, analyst aspects of his reign, but he was the one who issued this um, uh, papal bull. Uh, well, this is what it sort of looked like when uh, these Spaniards and Portuguese showed up. Uh, this is from a mural by Diego Rivera. Uh, and it's quite interesting because you see, you know, the forced labor, the whip, uh, the conquistadors, uh, you know, the, the pikes, all the, the wealth of the land, the cattle, sheep, and so forth. Uh, this man's being tortured. And all kinds of things are going on in this one painting that suggests what happened right away in the uh, so-called discovery of the Americas. And a lot of people don't know that the Inquisition actually came to, to the Americas. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, <clears throat> heathen who resisted were, were considered to be heretics and, and pagans and could be uh, uh, executed and so forth. Well, there's a remarkable book uh, by Jack Weatherford called The Indian Givers, which uh, many years ago, Katarina Coker, who is a part Creek Indian, lectured for the Community of Reason on this book. And I'd never heard, I guess I'd heard of the book, but what she, what she talked about here, and when I read the book, it was really quite amazing. In Pot or near Potosi in Bolivia is this mountain called uh, Cerro Rico, which means the wealthy or rich mountain. Uh, this is a, an interior of it. And this mountain was uh, sort of solid silver ore. Oh. And uh, so it was mined for centuries. And Weatherford states in his book that this, it wasn't really the gold that they got from the New World, it was the silver. And the acquisition of all this silver uh, enriched Spain and, and really led to the, the whole pro uh, Spanish Empire and its economic characteristics. Uh, this is the mountain in, in recent times. It's still being mined. Those is, the silver is about all gone. People still go up and try to find something. And there's a, a tin mine there. Uh, we're switching now to the Spice Islands, which are near Indonesia, present-day Indonesia. Uh, these were uh, <clears throat> uh, the source of spices, as you might imagine from their name, particularly cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg. And there was one island here which was the only place where you could find nutmeg in the world. So the, the uh, the Dutch finally took this over in a very bloody business. They uh, essentially killed off the natives. The natives wouldn't work for them, so they killed them off and imported other people from uh, South Asia. But this, this, this was an example of a rare commodity, uh, 
obviously uh, very profitable because of the high demand, easily transported, uh, and so forth. <coughs> Another aspect of this early period, which by the way we generally think of as the mercantilist period of capitalism, we'll come around to the later period in a moment, but this is the famous triangular trade pattern where uh, uh, the British and the French and others would go get slaves in Africa. Um, they would produce things like molasses and sugar, take it to New England, be processed into rum, and then other goods would like uh, tobacco and iron and so forth, whale oil, would go back. So this, this triangular pattern was a tremendous thing in the development of the British Empire. 